construction in ancient Maldives was mainly dependent on the local availability of materials. Coral stone and timber were the most feasible and long-lasting materials available. Particularly during these days, coral stone became the primary building material for monumental buildings. Ihavandu is an inhabited island of the Maldives, located in the northernmost geographic atoll in the country. This island seems to be an important island in this atoll historically because the name of the island, Ihavandu, resembles the original name of this entire atoll, Ihavandipolu. The entire atoll was divided into two administrative parts during the 70s. The part to which Ihavandu belonged was renamed as Ha Alif Atoll. At present, the island has an island level administrative constituency governed by Ihavandu Island Council. Traditionally, the people of the island depended on fishing as their main livelihood, with a majority of the working age group being experienced fishermen. Today, the majority of the people work in the tourism industry, although some still engage in fishing. The island is also an important stopover harbour for a long time. Ihavandu's significance has become more important recently because the island has a rich cultural heritage site which is considered as a protected site at present. That is the Coral Stone Mosque of the island which is a rare marvel among many coral stone monuments of the world. Among the coral stone mosques of the country the significance of Ihavandu Old Friday Mosque is that it is the finest surviving example of small coral stone mosques with Dala. It is also the best in the northern part of the country in terms of construction, fine carving, calligraphy and workmanship. The condition of the old mosque is still very good despite it being a coral stone monument of more than 300 years old. The people of the island still use the mosque to perform prayers and today they call this mosque the Asari Miski which means an antique mosque in the Vahi language. I have been working here for the last 15 years. I am the caretaker and I clean and maintain this place. As far as we remember, this mosque has been here for a long time. We call it Asari Mosque. The beginning of the construction of the mosque was not clear but it was completed in December the 16th, 1701 CE during the reign of Sultan Ibrahim Muzhiruddin. The mosque is located in the northeastern side of the island, which is the opposite side of the main jetty and harbour area. The mosque complex has taken an entire block between Orchid Magu and Amini Magu of the island. The mosque complex comprises of the mosque building, a short minaret, an octagonal well, a mausoleum and the cemetery area with tombstones. A new boundary wall surrounds the entire mosque complex with three entrances to the complex. It's usually uh, a rectangle with with three sides there is veranda and there is one side 
the main entrance. And usually this is the layout of any other coral stone mosque. And which is very much unique to this mosque is the step minaret, which is made from coral stone and lime plastered. And also there is an octagonal well in the site. The original Friday mosque building made from coral stones is now within a modern mosque. Although one cannot see the original mosque from outside clearly, one can distinguish it visibly with the new extension added to the entire mosque building. The original mosque is quite a small mosque with a prayer hall and veranda-like antechambers on the three sides except the mihrab side. There is no mihrab chamber and the mimba is located at the right corner of the main prayer hall. Khalif Ihavandu ancient mosque is considered to be one of the most beautiful coral stone mosques in the northern side of Maldives. And how the walls of the mosque is built is very similar to any other coral stone mosque. And how it was built was using the coral stones are cut into blocks and they are assembled using tongue and groove and pins and without using any mortar or lime. So it can be easily assembled and reassembled if necessary. Like many other coral stone mosques, this mosque is also built on a coral stone platform or on a large plinth with coral stone walls. This platform is raised from ground level up to a height of approximately 4.5 feet, which is a little lower than the Male Friday Mosque. There is only one entrance step made on this platform to enter the original mosque building. On top of this platform, around its entire top border, a coral stone wall is constructed which is around three feet high. This wall has three layers of coral stone blocks where each layer is assembled over the other using tongue, groove and pins technique. The rest of the wall is connected to the roof by latticed wooden frames. The walls of the main prayer hall is completely made from coral stones, again by assembling coral block with each other by neck and groove technique. The roofing and ceiling is constructed using timber and mainly teak was used. Unlike Male Friday Mosque, this mosque doesn't have any columns or pillars inside the mosque. The three doors that is used to enter the main prayer hall is also made from wood. Actually, the coral carvings of the mosque, we find in the rear side that some parts are incomplete. And there have been, uh, in our research, some believes that in, in building the coral stone mosque, usually they take the coral stones and when, when the coral stones are taken out from the sea, it's quite soft. So it's very easy to cut into the block and do the carvings. So after that, uh, it's assembled. But looking into Ihavandu, because it, after assembly, the, uh, the engrave or the carvings are incomplete. So we believe that some carvings might have been done after being assembled too. Apart from the mosque building, other coral stone structures in the mosque complex are also important artifacts of coral stone architecture. For instance, the short minaret of the mosque is made from coral stone and lime mortar. The minaret is only a six-step high structure which was believed to be an addition to the mosque during the 1950s when the mosque was upgraded. During the early days, the muezzin would go up the steps to call the prayer as we don't have the modern speaker system during those days to call for prayer. There are also many tombstones, octagonal water well 
and a mausoleum in the complex, all made from coral stones. According to the locals, there were four wells inside the mosque complex that were also made from coral stones. The other three wells built on the eastern side of the mosque were used for bathing and drinking, but these wells are no longer visible and seems to be disappeared within the cemetery. The well that is seen today is the one mostly used for ablution purpose. Previously, even when we were children, we used to come here to pray. At that time, there was an agricultural land here next to the mosque, and this land is close to the jungle. We used to come here through a small lane. At that time, this mosque is almost 950 feet away from the area where people lived. Before people used to have Friday prayers here, but no longer we do it, because there are four other new mosques in the island. But in future the council is thinking to use this mosque during Ramazan. This cemetery, which has occupied a large part of the mosque complex, has many coral stone tombstones and a mausoleum. Some of these tombstones are of eminent people like members of the Uthimu Bortakurufan's family and wazirs of the Amigli dynasty. It is also believed that the tombstone in the mosque ground to the eastern side just close to the mosque belongs to the expert carpenter who carried out the work of the mosque. This mosque also represents the skills and craftsmanship of the people of that period. It also depicts the design and technology that developed the early 18th century. The stone carvings which are found are usually the abstract geometrical patterns, the interlace, uh, interlace patterns and also floral and leaf designs. Other than that, uh, there is the seal of the Sultan who built the place. And uh, looking at the designs, there are, we believe there are deeper meaning to that. A repetitive designs is usually a part of Islamic architecture, so it's very common to see this kind of designs in the mosques. But there might be more intention of portraying this in these mosques which is related to Maldivian traditions and culture. For instance, the stone carving found on the exterior walls of the platform of the mosque is unique. It is an evidence of the indigenous knowledge of architecture that these artisans possessed at that time. The ceiling of this mosque is also coffered and has square panels. There is only one dome in this mosque which is square in shape and has some similarities to that of one smaller dome in the Male Friday Mosque. The wood carving of the ceiling is highly refined and lacquer work is different patterns and designs. The colors used are vibrant, having red, yellow and shades of orange. The ceiling is supported using beams and these beams are connected to the ceiling using balusters which are different in shape than the ones used in the Male Friday Mosque. As you know, the Ihavandu ancient mosque is quite small. There is no post inside. A part of that, the, the dome of the mosque is very extensively beautiful. We believe that this, the, the dome is built using the wooden pieces, jo uh, wooden joinery recessing to the center giving the form of a dome. So usually in mosques there is domes which represents uh, the Islamic architecture. So we believe that in, in Coralstone Mosque also this dome or the, this lage is representing the dome. 
The calligraphy and other inscriptions found in this mosque are also similar to that of the Male Friday Mosque. The same font is used to inscribe the Quranic verses and Prophet's sayings on the same beams of the ceiling, doors and other areas. Another important difference found in this mosque is that it doesn't have columns or pillars inside it as it is a small mosque. The ancient coral stone tombs found in this cemetery have some of the finest designs of the country which is rare in its pattern and carvings. It has been refurbished and extended many times in the past. For instance, the roofing has been changed from the initial coconut thatch to Indian clay roofing tiles during the 1950s and the dala was extended and timber lattice windows were added. The clay roofing tiles was again changed to metal profile sheets in 2005. The dala was further extended with a perimeter wall having aluminium windows. The floor was changed to ceramic tile as seen today. The octagonal well was also repaired with stainless steel bands on its mouth. This was done to hold the coral stone blocks from getting apart. The mosque is now very different from those days. It has been renovated and extended with new capacity. This mosque is the most antique and ancient mosque in this region. Even though this mosque is small, it has a small minaret and there are two tawas or cooking vessels on both sides of the mosque. According to the local people of the island, these two cooking vessels have some significance to certain folklore relevant to the island. For instance, people believed if one moves any of these vessels, the island will have an earthquake. There are important differences between this mosque and other mosques. Some interesting differences are noticed in this mosque's carving. For instance, those similar patterns of stone carving found in the Mali Friday Mosque are noticed in this mosque. These patterns are not that fine in this mosque. Some of the designing found on the exterior wall of the platform is also not complete. This is particularly noticed on the Gibla wall or back of the mosque. The plinth area of the Cor Coral Stone Mosque, Ihavandu Mosque, also shows some, resemble, some resemblance to the monument seen from India and Sri Lanka. And the, wood, the woodwork is usually close to boat building techniques. And the stone construction work or stone carpentry work have been practiced in the Eastern Africa. So it's a uh, joint uh, of uh, compiling of all this workmanship seen in this mosque. This mosque is very small and has a unique structure which is rare in Maldives too. The unique thing about Ihavandu Old Friday Mosque is that uh, uh, in, in, in every of the coral mosques uh, uh, the, 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 the mosque, the structure has uh, uh, pillars, pillars inside the central part of the mosque. But uh, in Ihavandu Mosque, we, we, we don't see any pillars or anything, uh, any, anything of that sort uh, inside the central part. Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, the mosque has only one entrance, uh, that is the one on the eastern side. Uh, but the other mosques, they have uh, entrances on three sides, except from the western side. These two factors are the only thing that is unique uh, about Ihavandu Old Friday Mosque when compared to the other uh, coral stone mosques in the Maldives. It is believed that the traditional Maldivian architecture 
particularly coral stone mosques reveal a unique fusion of many maritime cultures of the Indian Ocean. According to historians and architectural experts, these structures display the very fine craftsmanship borrowed from the rich local maritime culture. These ancient mosques are testimony to the rich architecture that evolved and remain the most significant reminder of our architectural heritage of this era. And this is one reason today these mosques have been selected for the UNESCO's tentative World Heritage List.